So I think this is working. Sorry for the delay. Um, technology. I'm still not even sure if this is 100% working. All right, yeah, okay, I think we're good now. Um, hope you can hear me, okay. Uh, here we go. All right, so uh, now that I think this is finally working, sorry to, that I'm late. Um, I did intend on starting on time, but it didn't work. Um, anyway, so today we're going to be doing something that I mentioned last week. Um, and that's going to be, we're going to try to make uh, a snake earring. So basically like just a U shape that's going to have, you know, the snake coming down through the head will be on one side, the tail will be at the back. Um, and as I mentioned before last week, uh, this could be done like, uh, what's the word? You could change like different species of snakes if you wanted to make a, a little lineup of them, you know? Um, I am not going to be doing that today. I don't have a specific goal. Uh, I'm just going to try to make something snake-like. Um, I don't even have like an anatomy thing up here yet. So if I put like, you know, the head of a boa constrictor on a, a rattlesnake, don't shoot me. I, I don't know what I'm doing yet. Um, anyway, I have an idea. Um, I'm going to try doing all of this in ZBrush. However, I claim no expertise with this program yet. This is just how I think it could work. I haven't actually practiced it. I should have, but I didn't. Um, but if all else fails, then I do have a backup plan. Um, in another CAD program, I did make a, uh, what's the word? I made like the most basic snake, quote unquote snake shape. Um, but the upside to doing it that way, I think, is that you know I've got already the perfect curve uh, proportionally, and I know exactly what the diameter is of the gauge, so I think I might end up going with that anyway, but I do want to try it with this first. So we'll see how this works. Um, yeah, we'll see how this works. So basically my idea was to um, try to like pick this up from the middle and kind of have it droop over. But the way I'm looking at this now, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, let's move to poly or topology. Sorry, I've got so many cords in front of me. Everything's all wobbling all over the place. Let me just get set up better here. Move. Okay, we're just gonna go to move. If anyone has a suggestion for brush, I'm all for it. Uh, yeah, that's not what I wanted to do at all. Huh. Also, I apologize that I have dropped the resolution of the stream considerably. Um, last week, I wasn't happy with the how stuttery it was, you know, in the stream itself. Like when I'm looking at the screen, it's perfect. But when you guys were watching it, it was stuttery as hell. And it still is stuttery, unfortunately. Um, so I thought I fixed it, but it looks a little better. Maybe not perfect. Okay, so this is clearly not the brush I want. Move tool did not work. Move topology doesn't work. Um, I honestly don't know. But anyway, let's try something new here. Let's go and try my little thing. I should have done this before. I really should have. Uh, oh, this is at my STL thing. Oops. There we go. All right. Uh, let's just go to standard for now. Okay, so <clears throat> clearly that didn't work uh, as intended at all. Like I should have done this, um, but if you think about it, this what the heck is that? Oh, that's just like an aberration. Okay, um, 
if you think about it, this might be the better way to go because now I have everything exactly the way I want it proportionally and I can now just play with the model. So let's do that. I realize this is a little bit of cheating, but you know, honestly, I, I don't see it as cheating, especially if the job gets done. Um, I do realize I do need to learn how to do something like this in ZBrush directly, I think, but it's not like it didn't get made. So that's something anyway. So this is the idea here. Um, these are obviously very straight because I was only working in CAD. So um, every like, you know, CAD is very straight and geometric and that's fine. Um, I'm just thinking of where I can start here. Um, I'm also wondering if this is one to one scale because you can see I've got kind of the floor here and it's obviously much smaller. Um, I did import this a little differently. I didn't just, you know, open an STL file. I had to go through uh, the 3D, mesh, 3D print hub and import the STL specifically. And there are ways of changing its dimension right here, but I think this is all one to one, 25 millimeters. That doesn't seem quite right, um, but whatever, it's, it's okay. It, it, like this is all proportional, so I'm just gonna run with it. Um, yeah, let's get into this already. Shut up, Dan. Oops. Oh yeah, we should probably, um, <laughs> should probably Z-remesh this because if we turn this on, you can see all the lines. That's perfectly okay. Uh, Z-remesher. There we go. That's better. So they were all nice, they're all vertical lines, obviously not very useful for us, but now everything is a little bit more uniform for what we want. Now we can divide that a couple of times and begin our sculpting. Now I hope, oops. Uh, okay, it's going to keep that crease. We're going to have to smooth that crease out, I think, somehow. Maybe I'll build it up. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Yeah, there we go. So we'll build up this crease. And we'll smooth out the head and everything, get a decent kind of, you know, flow going here. What the heck? Why is my polish doing that? What's going on with my polish tool or smooth tool? Why is it doing that? Mm, I don't like it. What the heck is my smooth tool doing? <laughs> it looks really cool. I kind of wish I could have that actually print, but that's not what I want. Um, how did we do that last time? When stuff like this happens, there was a way you could just like reset the brush. Um, actually, you know what? Let's just reset all brushes because that's fine with me. There we go, that's what I want. Oh no, the crease is still there. Crap. I 
and it takes a while to activate. What's going on? Something wrong with my computer right now, I think. I wonder if my keyboard's just low on battery or something. What does polish do? Eh, it's not what I want. I'm not going to worry too much about this right now. I'm, I'll get to it eventually, but I'm getting bored with not having that work out the way I like. Let's do something we know how to do. Let's do uh, a little topology moving here. Now, I'm not going to turn on symmetry yet because... I just want to get the nose. Right, but as soon as we start doing eyes and stuff, then yeah, well, absolutely. Funky. It's actually kind of neat. <clears throat> I'd like to have those nice swirly sort of uh, looks as, like as a texture I think it'd be kind of neat yeah neat I like it I see that it's it's divided things up like a little bit more than I thought it would I, I mean as an STL I kind of thought it was all conformed um, and I did specify that in the other CAD program so I'm not entirely sure why I'm going to Z remesh this in a little bit just to uh, even all of this stuff out because it's getting a little. a little bit messy. That's all right. Oh, what the heck? Oh, I see. Well, that's not cool. So we basically just like built a flap over. <laughs> over the ball, that sucks. Huh. Now this is starting to get a little messy here. Let's see, remesh this again. I mean, like, if you go into geo or not geometry, if you go into subtool, you see, like, this is just one shape. So that's a little bit disconcerting. Um, I mean, I guess I could have just tried to, uh, this is why I wanted to build it all in ZBrush. Cause then I, you know, there's none of these cross platform issues. So I think I'm just gonna kind of go for like a boa constrictor, which I don't, have one. I've never really dealt with one. But I'm pretty sure they have kind of like a snubby nose. I think they've got kind of like a little cleft right there. So. Whoops, what the heck happened there? Yeah, it takes a while for my shift key to actually register. It's like a full two seconds. Maybe it's because I'm streaming as well. Um, computer's having a bad day or something. 
I know it just installed an update. Yeah, that's it. Hmm. So I'm pretty sure constrictors don't have, you know, oops, don't have this. Doesn't look bad from the top. And of course, uh, I will be playing with like making this more schnicky. Uh, move. Let's make this tremendously big. Oh. Well, that's not as big as I thought it would be. What the heck? Maybe that's the issue, actually, because I imported it and, <clears throat> you know, like the scale that we're working at relative to the floor is just way bigger than it wants to be. Hmm. I know it didn't quite do what I wanted it to when I loaded it. Normally it lets me choose the size when I do it through that plugin, but it didn't that time. So I'm not sure why. And this just this brush, what the heck? This is a size thousand brush and it's not even like it looks normal. <laughs> I don't know. That's silly. We don't even have that many polygons. Why isn't it scaling? See what I mean? I don't know anything about this program. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. Like, just give it a shot. What the heck is that? Got a big hole in the model? Where did that come from? It's supposed to be capped. Something is wrong. This is really bugging me. Why is it doing that? I'm gonna try this again. I haven't done enough progress on this to warrant not importing again, because this is silly. There we go, what the heck? Like, now it's actually in a decent size. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, at least now the move tool is going to work well. Um, let's start with that then, shall we? Yeah, okay, thousands a bit much. Let's go with this one. Oops, it's grabbing way too much there. It's even grabbing the head. Okay, this is too big. Mm. Okay, now it doesn't even want to do anything. What the heck? Symmetry on? No, symmetry's not on. Transform. Yeah, I have no symmetry. Okay, why isn't it? Why is it doing that? This program's backwards sometimes. Like, what the heck? I can't move up here now? Why can't I move up there? This drives me a little bit nuts, I gotta say. I wonder if it'd be different if it was an OBJ. Does anyone have any input on that? OBJ wise? STLs? Yeah, that's so odd. Like, oh, you know what it is? It's because we didn't see remesh it. That's why. What the heck? Why didn't I think of that? Doi. Ugh, man. There we go. That's what I wanted. All right. Okay. I'm dumb. Ugh. Ugh. There we go. That's what I wanted. It's because we didn't bother to Z remesh. doesn't really look like a 
a snake. Now I know we're gonna go back, but I wanna keep this generally proportion-wise uh, as much as I can. It's close to this because I do know that this size up here is a two gauge, which is what I wear. And then from there we can just scale up or down. Um, yeah, so we'll see. That's an interesting idea that I just had. Um, be kind of neat, you know, if you had like a right and a left, you know, they like kind of looked back at you, you know? So in other words, this one would be if we had the snake looking this way. Could be your right side. That'd be kind of neat. Cool. All right. Um, let's... I'm generally happy with that. Let's, um, whoops, what am I doing? Is it still, yeah, it's, so it's still broken up. Not ideal. Um, it's not what I want. Which is the right size now? At least the brushes make sense. No, I want that combined. Does anyone know how to do that? Why doesn't it want to combine? Because I know for a fact that this was all perfectly smooth because I lofted them. I was using Shaper, by the way. Uh, I lofted them from this level to there to make that nice cone. And then I just added a ball on the end. So I know for a fact that it's all one piece, but it's not registering that way. Well, at least we have... We just got some basics. We're not going to be completely lost here topology yeah we should be able to move this face much faster now now that i can actually have a proper size brush Kind of looks like the snake from like Jungle Book, you know, a very animated look. Not what I'm going for, but I know this is just move topology. I just kind of want to want to see what's going on here. Like it does very clearly break it up. There's a way I could just, you know, make everything seamless, but not, not have to do the, um, like a combination thing, you know? That looks a little lumpy. I want to go back. Yeah, I'm just gonna bring this part of the neck. Snake neck? Do snakes have necks? I don't know. Oops. Bring that in a little bit. Bring that in. Ah, gross. 
those. Looks like a shoe. <laughs> know what I want. I feel like this section should be a little bit narrower. Maybe this should be a little bit more in there. Yeah, that's better. Um, Actually, there's a good question. Oh, it's still not capped. What the heck is up with that? It's got like a gross little butthole on its tail. <laughs> I think the term in ZBrush is hard surface. Is that true? That's where you need, like, like for 3D printing, you need to make sure that everything's got, everything's been capped. And it's all like, what's the word, boolean or manifold or something? Because it depends on what program you're using, but. Oop. That delay again, bugging me. Yeah, it's not bad. If there's any like snake biologist watching of the three of you in the stream right now, I'm sure you're cringing like crazy. It's not terrible, but I do think I'm gonna drop the tail quite a bit. Um, he looks a little—he looks a little stubby now. I know that. Ooh, maybe I won't drop the tail. Maybe I'll just kind of tighten everything up, and just kind of taper him because when I made this proportionally, I think it was 50 millimeters, which. Yeah, so it's 50 millimeters, five centimeters, right about there. And I guess it could actually be a little longer. We can go down to 60. Uh, all in the name of proportion, I guess, right? Obviously, ZBrush, I'm gonna have to just kind of estimate what that looks like, 60. But, um, Whoops, that's the wrong one. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll just drop that a little bit. Yeah, there we go. That's kind of what I want. Yeah, so it was the inflate tool. I just, I'm using it backwards. I'm de-inflating things. Whoa, that's messed up. Fix it, polish. <laughs> Fix it. No, don't do that. <laughs> what have I done? What have I done? Yeah, so we got a mad crease right there. Let's, uh, I'm gonna try to Z-remesh it. I don't think it's gonna do anything though. No, well, sort of. 
Not really. But I bet you if I divide that, yeah, it's going to look pretty much the same. Darn it. I don't know what to do for that. Oh, it just keeps getting worse. <laughs> Stop. I mean, this is doing what I want it to do. I want it to get smaller and pointier, but I don't want this weird cancerous growth on the side. Eh. Go away. Is there not like a little like scissors tool? I could just be like, <laughs> okay, uh, well, hmm. let's think logically. Uh, I'm going to have to put a sprue somewhere to cast this if I was to make it. Why not the tail? <laughs> and then we just file it off. Yeah, so it's, that's my, my solution. It's getting a little pointy. It's not really round anymore. And I think snakes are generally round. Let's go back and do that a bit more uniformly, maybe. Yeah, let's go up and down rather than focus on just that one spot. And maybe we can get rid of that weird growth. So actually, yeah, let's go back. What happened here? Okay, so it all started here with with that weird little uncapped end, I guess. Now, if I just, oops, yeah, it's fine. I don't care. Eh, there we go. Oh, gross! What the heck is going on? I don't know how to do this. Well, you know what? I'm just going to like avoid the end. How about that? Let's avoid the end. Let's focus on the rest of the body looking okay. And we'll get there when we get there. I will do some jujeling and uh, YouTubing and figure out how to fix well, not only this end, I guess, but also these creases. So we're still using the inflate tool negatively, pushing everything back together. Now, what does this look like? Let's frame this. It's not too bad. I mean, it's getting a little sharp here, though. Just put a bit more attention on that side. A little bit more on the back. Now he's got like a weird club for a tail. Okay. Yeah, I was kind of serious. Is there like a little snip tool? Can I just nip it off? Oh, that actually cleared it up there for a sec. Maybe it's because I attacked this a little bit more uniformly. You know, now it just kind of looks like a little sausage. <laughs> uh. Uh, yeah, okay, that's not too bad. It's better than what it was. It used to be that weird cankerous growth hanging out of its tail, but better now. Um, let's leave the tail alone. Let's get up into the body area here. I think I should make my brush a tiny bit bigger. Yeah, there we go, nice and smooth even and a little bit too much there <laughs> there we go let's 
a little weird. Switch that around. There we go. Yeah, so we'll just kind of flip it back and forth, I think, between inflate and inflate add, inflate sub, and we'll get something more or less, maybe. Smooth that out. Oh, it's doing it there now too. Uh, so there must be like a, where is it? Move topology, there we go. Yeah, we'll just tuck it inside, no one will notice. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, yeah. All right, I wanna put a little bit more attention on his face or her face and yeah we'll do some face stuff and then I think I'll try some textures I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do that yet I know there is a brush in here where if you just change the stroke to I don't remember which one it was or maybe it was the alpha Oh, it was the alpha, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it was alpha, this one? And then it goes standard, oh, oops. Alpha, negative, nope, that wasn't it. That brush was a little bit too big, but. There's a way you can do scales, like right on the, the model. Uh, maybe it was this one. Doesn't do anything. Hmm. I might have to ask my. Um, that's kind of neat. I'm gonna have to divide this a couple of times. That'll make it look better. There we go. Much better. Ooh. Nifty not scales but it's kind of neat um, let's see that's not bad but that's not that's not really that's like more like lizard skin that's not really snake skin snakes are nice and smooth neat but not what we want was it just noise no it's not noise that's kind of neat too I like that one Nope. Hmm. I know we tried that already, but I like it. It's neat. Anyway, um, <clears throat> back to what I was doing before. Uh, let's get rid of alphas off. Okay. Uh, we should probably move a little bit. Let's turn that off. off. Let's move the topology a little bit here. Let's get him right way up. That would be helpful. There we go. Frame. Move. Right way up, please. Thank you. Eh, better. Zoom. Okay, so I think there's like a weird cleft kind of like goes between the eyes. So you know what, let me just pull up a reference image because guesswork is great, but doing it right would be even nicer. Boa constrictor. There we go. Image. 
images. Oh, okay, so that's interesting. Um, just looking at like, you know, Google image here. Um, it looks like a lot of, like there is a cleft, but it's hard to say if there's, if that's a pattern on the skin. They definitely do have like bulbs on the sides of their heads. So like right here, I'll make a smaller brush. So we've got like bulbs. Yeah. Uh, and their nose, that's not too bad. The jaw does drop quite a bit down here. There we go. And yeah, their nose definitely does have more of a cleft. So like right in the middle, I'll have to make a smaller brush. And that kind of gets pushed in. Maybe that's too small. Sorry, I should be using my tablet. I'm sure the clicking is bothering me. Uh, let's smooth that out. Smooth. There we go. Because I don't want to create another crease that I have to deal with. Now, I want to look at proportions for the head. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to do a tongue. I see most of these have like a tongue sticking out. Oh, interesting. There's a good shot of like, you know, the head straight on looking down. Okay. Yeah, that's it. set that up. There we go. Zoom. There we are. All right. So we have a reference image doing the proper way here. Let's make this a bit bigger. And actually the neck is not too bad. It actually do it doesn't flare. Like in this area, there isn't nearly as much of a, a curve. It actually is almost like this with a little uh, crease, almost. The only thing that bugs me right now is this. How there's like that little bump there. But yeah, let's just drag that out. Oh, that worked, uh, kind of worked. Mm. Not bad, not bad. Hey, you know what? I liked it the way it was before. Forget it. There we go. Okay, that's the way I want it. Now, looking straight down on this schnanky schnanky, these have to be very, it's very heart shaped. Like, these are a lot bigger than I thought. There, there. Yeah, it's a bit bulbousy, honestly. I'm gonna put that back. A little bit more there. And then it's very smooth transition down there and there. And I believe, yeah, this is definitely a little bit longer than I thought. That looks much better. And there's like a bunch of texture on the side, on this image anyway, which we'll deal with later. And yeah, I was right about the nose being quite snubbed. This is the reference image I'm working from. I know I'm going to add a cleft right in the middle, and then I think that will kind of make it look proper. Without any other facial features, it's kind of 
blobular right now anyway. Okay. So let's do that cleft from the top. And then I know I can move on to focusing in the eyes. Maybe we can turn on symmetry. Yeah, cool. All right. Uh, smaller brush, negative. Oh, I'm still in topology. I don't think negative or... Oh, I wasn't even do the right thing. Negative or positive doesn't really matter. You know what, actually? Let's use one of my more favorite tools. Uh, damn standard. There we go. We'll add that tiny little cleft that I was trying to create with topology, but it didn't really work out very well. Oop. Oop. Cool. And now that's kind of more defined. Cool. And then we can play. Oops, not the one I wanted. Rotate was what I wanted. Okay, a little bit more there. Mm, that cleft isn't so defined, actually. Let's just push this together, maybe. Terrible. I, I know we're going to kind of smooth this out into the mouth area. Eh, it's not bad, not bad, not bad. Just got to make this a little bit more symmetrical. Let's divide that again. I'm going to Z-Remesh because we're looking at like eight and a half million polygons right now. That's way too much. Uh, my computer, I know, starts getting a little stuttery around two million. Hmm. So yeah, we'll give it a second to do that. I kind of wish that, again, referring back, I wish that I knew ZBrush a little bit better because then I could have made the head, the arch, you know, the, the part that's going to fit through the ear, the neck, and then the tail, if we wanted to break it up, all different sub-tools, and we can just have like, you know, we, we can just have high poly count head, generally low poly count for everything else. That would have been nice, but I don't know how to do that, obviously. Um, yeah, this is a lot. The computer's just kind of chugging along here. Escape key, escape key to abort. Nope, I don't want to abort. I'm surprised at how little memory this is using up here. I was under the impression that I would need more, <laughs> more memory. So, I mean, I bought a memory upgrade kit for this thing and um, 32 gigs, not terrible, but it's only using like two, but it is like pinning my CPU, like a little monitor up in the corner. There we go. Computers figured it out. Now we'll divide that a couple of times. Oops. There we go. That looks better to me. Oh, actually, did it fix the little cankerous tail? 
kinda, not really. Eh, it looks better. This is no like overhanging stuff. Anyway, cool. Glad that got settled. Now we're at a hundred thousand polygons. It's really crazy how you can have virtually the same thing in front of you, but uh, how many? I don't know what order of magnitude that is. Like eight hundred times less polygons or something. And it still looks relatively the same, even though I divided it twice. So, anyway. Okay, um, I need a new reference image. Specifically for the mouth, because I don't know what the chin area is going to look like. There's a good one. So, yeah. And it'll, actually, it'll give me the nose as well. That's good. So they have a very boxy nose. So we'll go move. Oops. Let's make this fit figure. This, I think, is a bit much right here. Go away. Yeah, there's not uh, not as much of a, like a, what would you call it? Like a neck bulge, maybe? It's hard to describe exactly what that is. I'm sure if I did a little bit more biological research tell you exactly what it is if you've ever heard uh, maybe you haven't if you've ever seen or watched any of the, um, the other ZBrush tutorials like you'll see or hear these masters of anatomy telling you like oh this is the some medical term I don't even want to embarrass myself trying to say something but like this is the bone that's connected to the other bone and it's all very complex and if you don't just put in this little bump there well then it's wrong or something like that I don't know anything about snake anatomy so I'm not even gonna try there we go let's move this back to the middle so I know what I'm doing and yeah so we need to put in the chin area I'll just bring that out cool now we're not gonna do, uh, we lost our cleft. Well, we'll put that cleft back in. I'll also put in a mouth. Oh, he, I have a funny little, let's do a little mouth like, oh no, not like that. Let's do it like this. Yeah, that's our mouth. There's our snakey, snakey. <laughs> Snake. No, no, we're not gonna do that. Um, <laughs> Um, obviously snakes can like unhinge their jaw to grab large prey so the mouth like this line comes way back to like here uh, I'm gonna divide that and get in a better position to draw this now they don't really have any kind of, it's, it's more or less flat, but of course there's those little subtle things. I do notice that the, there's a bump right there. I'm using the damn standard brush, by the way. You know what, actually, maybe I'll put in the nostrils, because they seem to be my, I'm looking at that on my reference photo the most as point of reference, and it would help if I had that on here, so. Nostrils kind of sit there and there. Actually, you know what, let's do symmetry. Let's X. What the heck? That's not where I want it. <laughs> oh, I see, it's because the, the model has been tipped over. Uh, maybe we'll fix that. I probably should have fixed that from the beginning. 
Uh, let's go to move. Rotate. Oh, that's not the axis I wanted it to rotate on at all. Uh, how the heck do I move that? Is it scale? Nope. Oh, what the heck? That's interesting. Huh. I did not expect to be able to do that. Why did it break it in half though? That's so weird. Because there isn't a line there. Is it because I had symmetry on, I wonder? Yeah, I think it's because I had symmetry on. I actually was playing around with symmetry a while ago. Active symmetry and just turn on everything and you get these really funky, like, well, that didn't really do a great job of it, but that was fun anyway. Get rid of that. Um, I don't know, I guess I'll just tip them over and bring it up. And then we know where the floor is, so that's good. And he's more or less in the middle. I'll try to put the tail directly on the origin point. Yeah, now we kind of have a center axis. Maybe that'll help move around a little bit better. Okay, anyway, back to drawing. Cool, yeah, that's a little bit better. Easier to navigate. He's upright. It's all good. Uh, and maybe symmetry will actually work now. Let's see if we can... No, symmetry is still way off over there, so forget it. Um, am I happy with that? Oops. Nope, too big. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Um, I'm just looking at this like light reflection thing. Okay, cool. Um, hit that with a smooth brush once, just to make sure. Cool, yeah. Now let's open my reference thing, which never open. My phone never opens because of Touch ID. Everyone says they want Touch ID back, but because I'm a jeweler, my fingerprint always gets wrecked and then it can never open, so I have to use my passcode anyway. But I do understand the mask thing with Face ID. It's, there's no perfect solution at all. Okay, cool. So let's put that back in the middle, and let's put in those nostrils, like I said I was going to a while ago. Now. I just want to see what a snake looks like face on. Oh, maybe those weren't actually nostrils now that I'm looking at my... Yeah, the reference image kind of showed them over here, but they're definitely more there. And... There, I think. Let me just compare. I wonder if this is one of those like subspecies things, you know, like did it evolve to be more in one spot for some reason? Yeah, like this is an entirely new species. Yeah, okay. I just put in boa constrictor and apparently it's simplifying. Yeah, I just saw one where the nostril was like up here, I suppose maybe because it's a swimmer. And then there's this one, which I'm looking at, which has the nostril like right pointed forward. Maybe that's just, I don't know, some predatory thing. Um, but I do think they're a little bit more to the sides. I'm gonna make that executive decision. So right here and right, oops, I don't work too much, right there. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. Okay. I 
I will refine those. I just wanted um, a reference point for the mouth. I want to get the mouth in here. Make that a little smaller. And yeah, they're not smiling. I know I can create. I can do that creatively. I could say, "Hey, he's got a big grin of a snake." But I'm not going to make it like the Jungle Book here. I'm also going to turn down Z intensity, maybe a little bit more intensity, just so it doesn't. Uh, that's not bad. Let's do 20. Yeah, I like that. Let's get 19. Yeah, perfect. That's what I wanted. So right on the side. Not straight. Oops. It's more or less straight from this area, and then there's like a little dip. Yeah, that's exactly it right there. So this actually kind of creases upwards slightly. Can I? There we go. Upwards slightly, like a little grin, and. I need something face on. Most of these reference images are like mouth open. Oh, there's a perfect one. So that's what we're going to look at now. And this is where that cleft is defined in the nose. So this actually comes up heavily like that. There we go. And we can go back in a little bit, and that's where the tongue comes out. Cool. Yep, that looks good. Now I really wish I had symmetry on. That's okay. We'll get this figured out. Even if I have to back out a lot more than I thought I would. Okay, so there. Yep. Wow. Um, <laughs> more or less first try. From the bottom, it's even close. Like, yeah, that was one shot wonder. I'll never do that again in my life, guaranteed. Uh, I'm gonna smooth that out a little bit. Just keeps that all nice and consistent. Nice. I think I'm just going to take this really tiny and get right in there. Obviously, bearing in mind, this is jewelry and it's going to be about, no, the head will be about that big. So as long as it looks generally the right shape, uh, I don't think the depth of the nostrils is going to really be noticed too much. Uh, I'm going to just do a little bit of topology moving it looks a little bit oops it's a bit too big whoops no my crease there we go I 
always find that when, I, when I'm doing the drawing pen, the difference between draw size and focal shift is like two millimeters. I could probably stand to figure out how to calibrate this, um, calibrate the display, the tablet to the, to everything, but actually, I think the trouble lies in the fact that this is a 5k display. So everything is a little bit jumbo sized, but it's so pretty. I love 5k. All right. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I just want to fix this tiny little thing there. I know I'm getting a little obsessive now, but there we go. No, stop doing that. That delay. Last little tweak right there. Good enough. Okay, moving on. I apologize. It's not bad, right? 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 Okay, now the ch uh, let's do the eyes next. Looking at this reference image, he looks very unimpressed. Um, oh wait, no, those aren't eye. Oh, his eyes are are actually those big bulbous things. Oh, okay, I don't know what I was looking. I was looking at like the little black specks in front of them, which I don't know what those are, but I assume they're like an eyebrow ridge or something. So maybe we'll have to take that into account as well. Um, maybe we'll do clay build up for this. Yeah, we'll do a clay build up. Uh, what is our, maybe we'll divide this again. Ooh. Yeah, that's all right. Um, no, I'm not going to divide it. No, I should divide it, but I shouldn't, but I do, but I don't. Okay, yeah, we'll divide it. We're at 1.7 million, give or take. Not awful. I think it can handle it. Okay, so I have a, yeah, there we go. So I had a weird alpha on there. That's just too big of a brush. Okay, moving on back here. All right, so he's got a bit of an eyebrow ridge. You know what, maybe we'll just do that. Topology for this. this is silly. Yeah, we'll just do topology and um, then we don't have to divide. Things will look more or less the same. Um, now I do need to change the focal shift so we get more of a feather, feathered look. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Okay. Um, eyeballs. So the eyeballs are. there and there but there yeah that makes more sense just looking at you know this the way the skull would work why would they be back here in this jaw muscle that doesn't make any sense yeah there we go so that's more or less where the eyes will be pull that out a little bit and then I'm gonna pull like a maybe this is where I'll use the clay and I'll draw in that eyebrow ridge thing and then we can go back with our favorite damn standard tool and go around the eye, give it that nice crease. Maybe 
Oops. And I think just a tiny bit more of a crease there. There we go. Once again, got to remember, snake head, maybe a quarter inch long tops. So we're not going to get too crazy, but watch me go crazy. And then if I divide that, yeah, they look a little bit, um, what's the word? <laughs> they look a little bit bug-eyed, you know just because of the poly count. Here we go. All right, cool. Uh, and let's go back to the clay, clay buildup. These are very subtle. So I think if I can get the right brush size, oops, not focal shift again. If I can get the right brush size, it would just be like a whoop. That's clearly not what I want to do right there. So I think I need a new image. That other image I was using was more for um, the mouth anyway. Oops. Ah, crap. There we go. There's a decent one. Mm. Okay, so these eyebrow ridges are just actually kind of like a bump right there. Not that big, mind you. Um, come on. There we go. He's an angry snakey snakey. <laughs> He's an angry snake. Grr. <laughs> um, believe it or not, that actually is more or less correct. Um, but to accentuate this line here, I think I'll use the. I'll use this again. Not bad, not bad. I think he needs a little bit. Ah. A little bit more there. No, too much. Back up. Just want to add a little bit. Come on, give it to me. Back and forth, back and forth. Now, I'm not really sure looking at this image. I think that crease might be a bit much. Well, honestly, that smooth was a bit much. Like, yes, there is definitely a crease around their eye. But it's not like a depth thing. It's, it's not a huge transition. It looks like there's definitely one behind the eye right here. Just using the smooth smooth tool and kind of dabbing that. Just 
trying to make this a little bit more. It's not bad. Okay, so this crease also kind of goes, oops. This crease also works back like that. And then it just kind of blends away into the body. Oh no, what have I done? There we go. Uh, <laughs> Command Z. If it weren't for that, where would we be as a society? It just blends away. Nice. Not bad, not bad, not bad. This eye does stick out a little bit more, obviously. There we are. Cool. I think I'm going to take a little bit of artistic expression here and just uh, smooth it out. Oh, no, not that much. There we go. Smooth it out a little bit right there. And now I'm looking at his nose. Um, those little flares above the nostril. I think I'll just do that in topology with a small brush. It's not really moving the, well, it kind of is moving the nostril up. But it actually looks a little bit better. Maybe it's that, there we go, that looks good. And I think one last little thing I'm noticing, I'm gonna make this brush pretty big lower the intensity significantly because there's a crease right here. No, that's not doing what I want it to do. There's a crease from the eye. Kind of, hmm, how do I describe it? It's kind of like the bone going from the top of the nostril, the nose, because it's all in line, right? The top of the nostril back to the eyebrow, and then everything back here is all muscle, yeah. So this needs to be a bone, basically. We need to make this all one solid looking piece from there to there. Cool. Um, What do you think? What do you think? It's not terrible. Considering I had no idea what I was going into, it's not bad. And nor have I ever held a snake before or anything. Um, yeah, not bad. Uh, I think the thing that's bugging me the most is, uh, well, maybe it's not bugging me. Obviously we have to do scale texture in here somehow. Uh, I will have to look up how to do that again and get back to you. Oh, sorry, no, I noticed something else. Sorry, I'm off topic. Um, I'll have to look up how to do that and come back to it later. There we are. Sorry, I noticed he looked a little dog-faced, like from this angle. And they're definitely more sleek-faced. So I'm just bringing that up, and that actually helps a lot because it makes this bone structure make more sense. 
And then I think there's the tiniest little bit of a dip right there. It's not quite as dog faced. That's a bit much actually. Let's go back. Oh, I like that. Um, sorry, yeah, so texture wise, I'll have to figure out how to do scales. Uh, and I'll have to get back to that. Um, sorry, my train of thought has been. I ruined my train of thought. Uh, I think what I was referring to was uh, I'm trying to get past the scale texture and the coloration. Um, some of the coloration is a little bit. Uh, it kind of throws the eye, you know, in terms of. I mean, looking at a photo, if I had it in front of me, it would be different, but. Uh, it throws the eye for like what's a shadow, what's a spot, what's a stripe, things like that. That's camouflage, so that makes sense. Cool. And then I've been streaming for a little bit now, so I'm going to call it, I think, the last thing we'll do. I know it's not as... Um, I know it's not overly satisfying not seeing the thing finished in one go, but I got stuff to do today. Got to go mail a package and other stuff. So I'm going to just, oops, come on. No, I do want the divide, the intensity higher. I got to put in these snake eyes and then I'll have to call it that will definitely come out in the 3D print. Yeah, it looked good from the one angle, but not very good from this angle. Oh. I thought ZBrush was about to tell me that everything was about to explode because I've done something dumb. Actually ruined it quite a bit, didn't it? Hmm. I just want to stick these little pupil things in the eye, and then I'm going to call it. Which way do they face? They're pretty much like dead on, dead eyes. Like this. that the pupil goes all the way up. That slit goes all the way up to the top. And that goes all the way to the bottom. That looks awful, really. Ew. Maybe we'll skip that. I mean, it looks good flat, but... Yeah, something we got to remember is that this is... You know, the slit isn't actually a depth thing. It's a, it's a color thing, like I mentioned about the coloration. All right, well, anyway, so there's my schnicky schnicky so far. Uh, I'm definitely going to come back to this and do some more work. I think we did pretty good on the face, all things considered. I, I think that's um, not too bad. Uh, proportionally, though, he's a little bit dwarfish, you know? He's got a big head and a teeny body, relatively speaking, so... Maybe we'll go in with the inf the negative inflate tool later. We can get rid of that. Um, is that symmetry on? Symmetry was on. Huh. That's okay. I didn't mess with anything on this side, thank goodness. Okay. Cool. Well, anyway, that's that. Um, thanks for joining the stream. I'm going to sign off now. But thank you for joining us. We will be doing this again next Saturday, if not sooner. I'm not sure. Uh, what my schedule is going to look like, but it was fun. So stay tuned for more and uh, feel free to ask questions if you have any. I'm always available. Um, ultimately, this project will be 3D printed and cast in silver 
And uh, when it's done, maybe I'll put them in the shop or something and show them off. Anyway, good seeing you. I'll see you again soon.